later on in 1942, Willie takes a cab to the Kingsbury Run area. He gets out of his cab and he dumps this trunk under a bridge and then he throws this the contents of a bag into a bush nearby. So a girl sees him and with all the stuff that's been going on in the last few years, you're going to report any weird behavior, right? Mm-hmm. So she notifies the police. And before they get there, some boys go and find the trunk. And what are you going to do? Mm-hmm. You're going to open that thing. And you're going to, hopefully it's a treasure. You found some, some gold, gold, some money, something good. And actually, they, they end up being horrified. They find a female torso in the trunk. Um, so they then look in the bushes and they find the head and the arms. So it seems like really familiar territory, right? So they do find her legs weeks later in Johnson's home. So they are positive that they've got the at least the person that killed this victim. Mm-hmm. So they identify the victim as 19-year-old Margaret Frances Wilson, and she was a young prostitute. And 19-year-old prostitute, yeah, she's very young. Yeah. So one-armed Willie is identified and arrested and later executed for this murder, but he denies any involvement in the torso murders. So yes, he confesses to this, he did this, but he swears he didn't do the torso murders. So those are our three victims. Who are you choosing? Um, What's your theory? I'm Team Sweeney. Team Sweeney? You feel like Sweeney did it? Mm -hmm. I absolutely feel like Sweeney did it. Um, So it just seems like everything is stacked against Sweeney here. One-armed Willie definitely committed a crime that was so eerily similar. But, yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know. Also, was it the same person that committed all of these murders? Yeah, I was about to say, if they're all coming the same, then... Yeah, maybe there are more copycats out there, and they all weren't the same person. So, I don't know. There are so many options here. So... I'm about, to, I'm about to throw a wrench in all of your theories. Are you ready for it? I'm ready for it. All right. So in 1938, on December 21st, the old chief of police in Cleveland gets a letter. And this letter is pretty eerie if you think about all the things that have happened and the, the um, nickname that they dubbed him as the Mad Butcher of Kingsbury Run and everything else. So I'm going to read this letter and see what you think. So this is written to Chief of Police Matowitz. And this is written, of course, with a typewriter back in the day. No spell check, no grammar check. And it's a little rough around the edges, so I'm going to do the best I can. But it says, uh, You can rest easy now, as I have come out to sunny California for the winter. I felt bad operating on those people, but science must advance. I shall soon astound the medical profession, a man with only a DC. I'm not sure what that meant. Um, What did their lives mean in comparison to hundreds of sick and a diseased twisted bodies? Just laboratory guinea pigs found on any public street. No one missed them when I failed. My last case was successful. I know now the feeling of Pastor Thoreau and other pioneers. Right now, I have a volunteer who will absolutely prove my theory. They called me mad and a butcher, but the truth will out. I have failed but once here. The body has not been found and never will. But the hand minus feature, the head Minus features is buried in a gil- gully on Century Boulevard between Western and Century Crenshaw. I feel it is my duty to dispose of the bodies I do. It is God's will not to let them suffer. So this seems like it's written from the actual killer mm-hmm. who left Cleveland, went to sunny California, and is the story to be continued. Hmm. So... We're going to talk about that a little bit more next time, because what if there's a connection between this and da, da, da. what's your guess? The Black Dahlia. Good guess. Yeah. What if there's a connection? 
So that leads us into a whole bunch of different options of the Black Dahlia, the Cecil Hotel Connection, all kinds of different things. So that's what we're going to go with next time. We'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that, but what do you think? That was interesting. I think it was that guy. I think You think it was this? They called me mad. They called me a butcher. Yeah, yeah it's so weird. Um, and I don't know, really, is this just something that was sent to throw them off even more? But the coincidences are crazy between the blood being drained and all the different things that were similar. So, I don't know. This case still, to this day, uh, almost 100 years later, is unsolved. So there are different theories. Um, there was actually a book written that uh, they actually cleared Frank Dozel. And a lot of people say that he was just basically the scapegoat for the police. He was forced to confess. And I absolutely believe that. I think he was just made to be the person that took the fall for everything. I don't think he had anything to do with it. Um, and I don't know. It's definitely a toss up between one armed Willie and Edward Sweeney, but um, one arm Willie, all I mean, he was obviously able to do one murder like that, but was he able to do all of them and with the precision with one arm? Yeah, I mean, how much force did he have to be able to decapitate people and kill them that way um, and to drain them of their blood and things like that? So, uh, yeah, definitely an odd, gruesome, eerie, creepy case, yeah. but. It's going to be a little bit of a to be continued for next week. So, Perfect. Yeah. So thank you for joining me for story hour again. Yep. Thank you for having me. And thank you all for coming to our story hour again. And we will see you soon. Thank you for listening, everybody. We will see you next time on Sinister Story Hour.